Before we get into the episode, I have something very important to tell you. Our new game, Super Red Raygun, just launched on Steam for PC, Mac, and Linux. With over 20 unique levels, three modes of play, and tongue-in-cheek story of 1980s politics, it's a whole lot of value for just $9.99. And pick it up by November 15th, and we'll even give you the soundtrack featuring music from Phantom NK and Bubble Pipe Media for free. Click the link in the description after the video and get your copy today. Pure, unadulterated rage. Usually, in a stressful situation, you'd want to avoid this sort of emotion in order to keep yourself focused. Unless you're a giant rampaging pile of muscles, like these two. Dr. Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk. And Doomsday, the monster who killed Superman. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Within each of us, off times, there dwells a mighty and raging fury, and this suits no one better than the mild-mannered scientist Bruce Banner. Cause when Bruce gets angry, oh boy, you wouldn't like him when he's angry. Dr. Robert Bruce Banner may have grown up with few friends, but what he lacked in popularity he made up tenfold with his intellect. However, in spite of his gifts, it was never enough to earn the respect and love of his father. Partly because Bruce was so smart that his alcoholic dad literally thought he was a monster and expressed that to Bruce pretty thoroughly. <laughs> God damn! How much distance do you think you got there, Wiz? Eh, nine, ten feet? Man, with an arm like that, he could really go places. Like the nut house after he murdered his wife right in front of Bruce. Aww. Understandably traumatized, Bruce coped by creating an imaginary friend to talk to. You know, I had an imaginary friend once. You did? What was his name? Dad. Oh. Well, Bruce's friend served as an emotional outlet all the way through his college graduation. However, his advice to Bruce was oftentimes destructive. So when the US military recruited Bruce to make weapons, it was actually kind of fitting. Bruce was tasked with developing a gamma bomb, which would use gamma radiation to target enemy weapons and buildings without endangering human lives. At least, that's what Bruce was told. Surprise, surprise! Gamma radiation is actually pretty fucking harmful! And when it came time to test the bomb and some dumb kid decided to play his harmonica right in the test zone, Bruce asked his assistant to stop the countdown and dashed off to save him. But turns out his assistant was a Russian spy who set off the bomb anyway. On that strange, strange day, Bruce's imaginary friend became a real-life terror as he transformed into the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> really? Yes, apparently. Ever since, whenever he's angry, Bruce's body and mind morphs into that of the Hulks, granting him unmeasurable power. While he loses Bruce's brain power, the Hulk is ridiculously strong. He can leap great distances, survive the harshest environments, and most importantly, smash the crap out of everything with his bare fists. He also knows a technique known as the Thunderclap, which creates a shockwave that can deafen foes, level forests, and push back explosions. As if he needed anything more than that, the Hulk has a healing factor that gives Wolverines a run for his money. You're healing. You should be dead. He's super strong and super hard to kill. What's not to like? Well, there's one little detail that kind of ruins the whole experience. Bruce can't really control the Hulk. In fact, the Hulk is his own being, and they both hate each other, vying for dominance over Bruce's body. And yet, Bruce and the Hulk are often reminded how much they depend on each other for survival. Bruce figured if he was stuck with his big green Goliath forever, he might as well try using it for good, eventually joining the Avengers, Defenders, the Fantastic Four, and even the Illuminati. Hulk has held up a 150 billion ton mountain, escaped Earth's gravitational pull with a single jump, and one time when a planet's tectonic plates started splitting apart, 
threatening to shatter the whole world, he just jumped right in there and pulled the planet back together. The estimated average mass of a single lithospheric plate is nearly 45 quintillion tons, and the Hulk pulled two of these together with nothing but his bare hands. And he's not just strong and tough, he's more than twice as fast as a fighter jet, which puts him over Mach 5 speeds at least, and he can always go faster if he's pissed off enough. This is because the Savage Hulk's strength is directly related to his anger. The angrier he gets, the more powerful he becomes. In theory, this means his maximum level of strength is potentially infinite. And when he taps into that immeasurable rage to the fullest, he truly lives up to his name of World Breaker. Bigger, stronger, and oozing with gamma radiation, the World Breaker Hulk is so powerful, with a single stump he created earthquakes felt hundreds of miles away. In his battle with Sentry, basically Marvel Superman, they almost destroyed New York. And when battling another World Breaker Hulk, a single collision between them obliterated an entire planet. Even the mutant Darwin's power, which specifically adapts to counter any enemy, decided that the best defense against the Hulk was to be somewhere else. Holy hell! Who could even stand up to this madness? Not many, obviously. Typically, Bruce does his best to contain and limit the Hulk's power. In fact, World Breaker Hulk is a result of Bruce relinquishing that control entirely. In terms of combat, usually only cosmic beings like Silver Surfer or Zeus have the might to challenge the Hulk. Oh yeah, like that one time Zeus hit him so hard it burned out his healing factor. But even gods sometimes have to learn the hard way. You do not mess with the Incredible Hulk. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. Puny god. What if all you had ever known was hatred and aggression, violence and pain? This life is reality for YouTube Doom YouTube comments! Doom Doomsday! Yeah! The Doom Doomsday guy! Thousands of years ago, on an uninhabitable prehistoric planet which would one day be known as Krypton, a scientist named Bertrand intended to engineer the ultimate life form. Yep, it's another one of those stories, but with one hell of a twist. See, at this time, Krypton was a harsh wasteland filled with nothing but sharp rocks, poisonous air, and violent predators. Bertrand believed that if he could create something that could live through that, they could survive just about anywhere. To realize this theory, Bertrand acquired an infant from somewhere, and through a rapidly accelerated evolution process, attempted to transform him into his dream creation. <laughs> oh, don't try to dance around it, Wiz! Bertrand put that little sucker into a baby cannon, blasted him into the wild to get murdered by any number of things, sucked up what was left of him with a vacuum cleaner, and just cloned a new one out of the mess to do it all over again. Well, yeah. The idea being each new clone would be stronger than the one before, thus covering millions of years of evolution in just a few decades. That doesn't sound like science. No, it doesn't. So after 30 straight years of baby murder, one of the clones finally survived the test. Amazed by his own success, Bertrand named this baby the Ultimate. The Ultimate Baby! But to the rest of the universe, he was their doomsday. See Wiz, reloading as it is, patenting my baby cannon was a good idea. Successful as Bertrand's experiment was, it was anything but a good idea. Turns out, while Doomsday usually appears to be a mindless beast, he remembered every single time Bertrand had him killed. As a result, Doomsday had been unintentionally programmed at a genetic level to hate everything that lives. Bummer. Needless to say, Bertrand was pretty screwed. Because even with 30 years of development, Bertrand had never quite figured out what to do if his experiment actually worked. Because Bertrand is the worst. I mean, he did do what he set out to do. He made an 8 foot 10 monster that doesn't need to eat, breathe, or have internal organs to live. It just kills and kills and kills some more. Doomsday possesses enormous strength, incredible durability, and poisonous spikes which can extend. But due to Bertrand's experiments, Doomsday's greatest power of all is his ability to adapt to his opponent's powers. After taking his sweet revenge, Doomsday stowed away on a supply ship and ravaged dozens of planets until he finally found himself on Earth. On that day, Doomsday did the unthinkable. 
on that day, Doomsday killed Superman. Well, kind of. He actually put him into a super sleep. After several days, he kind of woke up more powerful. Yeah, 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 we all know, Wiz. At least Supes took Doomsday down with him. Or maybe not. Turns out, whenever Doomsday dies, he just comes back to life, forever immune to whatever killed him in the first place. Uh, uh, uh. Can't be me the same way twice. He's been punched to death by Superman, blasted apart by the Radiance Energy, brutally ripped in half, incinerated by Imperiax, and just curb stomped by a Kryptonian horde. Practically invulnerable at this point, Doomsday is taken on Darkseid, tanking his Omega Beams and beating him to near death. He single-handedly defeated most of the Justice League and took on an energy attack that wiped out a fifth of a planet. He's punched through the Phantom Zone, battled super beings called Gogs for a century, and even broken Wonder Woman's arms, arms strong enough to help pull the Earth. And during his rematch with the Man of Steel, after witnessing Doomsday survive an explosion equivalent to one million nukes, Superman realized that the only way to stop him was to send him to the end of time. At his most powerful, Doomsday's mere presence can boil the ocean and disintegrate buildings. A casual stroll across Africa made wildebeest an endangered species just by walking around. But what he's got in strength, he really lacks in brains. Not that he's dumb, he just literally lacks a brain. More often than not, Doomsday is little more than a one-track mind-killing machine. This makes his intentions predictable, and a clever opponent could use this to, say, lead him into a trap. And should that foe come up with a new way to hurt Doomsday, he could be killed. Still, that's gonna be pretty goddamn hard to do. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, Wiz won't stop talking about this thing, so he wants to tell you about it. As a man of science, I analyze everything from the collar I drive to the razor that shaves my face. I only use a razor I've scientifically proven to be of both quality and value. I use Harry's. Thanks to their factory in Germany, Harry's produces quality razors at half the price. Just $2 a blade. Harry's sleek five blade razor offers a softer flex hinge, trimmer blade, textured handle for control, and a lubricating strip to help soothe the skin. But if you're like me, you'll want to try it for yourself. Harry's is so confident in their razor, they'll send you a trial set absolutely free when you subscribe. Just pay $3 for shipping. And as a viewer of Death Battle, you can get a free bottle of post-shave balm, which soothes and relieves skin after shaving and helps reduce redness. Just enter the code DEATHBATTLE at checkout. So head on over to harrys.com by clicking the link in the description below and get your free trial set and post-shave balm. Just remember, use the code DEATHBATTLE at checkout. But right now, it's time for a death battle!
spiky beard! immeasurable power and Doomsday's impossible immortality, this truly felt like a fight between an unstoppable force and an immovable object. Hulk may have had the advantage in raw strength, at least at his full potential, but Doomsday could certainly hold his ground. His victories against the likes of Superman and Darkseid prove he can take a hit from someone strong enough to break planets. And by experience, Doomsday had the speed advantage. He regularly fights foes with light speed capabilities, while that kind of speed is an extreme rarity in the Marvel Universe. In fact, the only foe that fast who Hulk's ever seemed to keep pace with in a one-on-one -on -one match was Sentry, and that was when he was at his most powerful stage, Worldbreaker Hulk. So overall, Hulk had strength and Doomsday had speed, but neither completely outclassed the other. At first glance, this one looked like it could go either way. Which means the devil's in the very tiny details. So why couldn't the Hulk's infinite strength just keep rising and eventually overwhelm Doomsday? Well, even assuming Hulk's strength was infinite, his healing factor was not. Don't get me wrong, it can only be overtaxed by hits from absurdly powerful beings such as Zeus or Sentry, whom Doomsday certainly compares. Naturally, Doomsday's crazy strength and speed started wearing that healing factor down. Here's where it gets a bit tricky. The Hulk may look like a giant green monster, but he's still technically human, and his power directly correlates with his anger. A human being's anger stems from an increase in hormones and adrenaline in the body. However, the brain can only produce these chemicals at such a rate for a limited time, eventually giving up and turning apathetic. Therefore, Hulk's limitless power could never have existed without his healing factor. It's the key. It allowed his body to continue producing hormones and adrenaline far beyond the norm, theoretically an endless supply thus increasing his superhuman power to an immeasurable degree. So Doomsday overtaxing his healing factor meant the Hulk could no longer maintain his increasing rage and Hulk form. And if you're still skeptical, that's why there's a bunch of times in comics when a huge impact forced the Hulk to turn back into Bruce Banner, including that battle between Worldbreaker Hulk and Sentry. With his healing power beaten down, he literally couldn't keep himself angry enough to stay in Hulk mode. I love science, but there's still one more thing. Thanks to his battles with Superman and other Kryptonians, Doomsday has evolved to a point where it's basically impossible to kill him with brute force alone. So Hulk couldn't have killed him by just getting angry enough to punch harder than Doomsday ever felt. Precisely. Here's the proof. Superman and Doomsday eventually had a rematch, in which Superman was much more powerful than their first battle. As we discussed before, Superman's power is also potentially limitless by way of continually absorbing solar energy. And at this point in his story, he'd begun to discover that. 
But try as he might, despite his increased power, Supes couldn't kill Doomsday with blunt force a second time. Ultimately, Doomsday's immunity to being ripped, impaled, incinerated, blasted with energy, and being beaten by blunt force from both focused and multiple sources means Hulk just didn't have the options available to take Doomsday out before his healing factor was overtaxed. On this day, Hulk met his doom. Do Doomsday. The winner is Doomsday. Next time on Death Battle. Hey guys, I'm Ben. I play Wiz. This is Chatty Plays Boomstick. And next up, we've got Zoro from One Piece. Stick to our Twitter to find out who he's going to be fighting. Want to watch Death Battle on your big screen? First members can now download the Xbox One and Apple TV apps. It's great, but super important. We just launched a brand new video game. It's Super Rad Raygun. Link in the description. Click it. Check it out.